Okay, so uh, the thing that I find interesting about the subway, this is too tall for me. The thing, I'm just gonna stand like this, because I can't lower them. The thing that I find interesting about the subway is that it's such a public, you're basically sitting in this weird stasis where you're not doing anything, but you feel like you're accomplishing something because you're moving. You're basically sitting still and just waiting for something to happen to you. But you feel like you're doing something productive. You're like, oh, I'm on my way, but someone else is taking care of it for you and you're just sitting there waiting. But it's such a solitary, like, inactive state. Like, some people try to be productive on the subway. Like, I tried, while commuting, read the whole Song of Ice and Fire series, which is not productive, because it's not like you're reading Shakespeare, you're reading about tits and dicks and dragons. Um, <laughs> So, I mean, some people do work, some people, you know, sit on Facebook and take BuzzFeed quizzes. But you're sitting and you're waiting, you're not in charge of kind of your own destiny, as it were. You're not physically moving yourself. And it's contrary to its name, public transportation is pretty public because you're in a group with people and you're all sitting waiting together, but no one talks to each other. It's a solitary experience, but you feel like you're accomplishing, like, even, I got out of bed today, and I'm leaving, that's what it feels like sometimes on the subway, like just to be there. I got out of bed, and I'm on the way. So, you know, you're sitting, you're checking your phone, you're reading tits and dicks and dragons and dwarves, uh, and you're moving on your day. So, my story begins, I would say picture it, uh, summer day, but no one here can picture what it's like to be warm. Uh, <laughs> I've forgotten, what is that? Um, what's it, what's not wearing a coat? Um, so, uh, I'm going, <laughs> I'm on the subway, and I live near, like, Downsy Station, so it's kind of a trek to get downtown sometimes. Uh, and any, I'm surprised when there's not a delay. So, uh, I'm down at Downsy Station, and I'm sitting down, and it's a nice summer day, and I'm going I'm out for lunch or something, and I got, like, a little sundress on, and I'm, like, chilling. Uh, and I'm sitting on the subway, and there's maybe, like, the second stop or something. There's a guy that's sitting near me, and he's not, like old or like weird or crazy or drunk or stoned or whatever. He's not like, you know, reasonably nice looking, whatever. He looks like a normal dude. He's sitting and he's like holding a beach ball and I'm like, whatever. Um, so, but I notice he's like looking like at me like too hard. Like I'm like really, and I'm like, fuck. So, he's, you know, you just know. And you're then you're like, oh my, I'm wearing a dress and it's too short. And then you feel shitty. Cause you're like, I'm a feminist. I can wear whatever I want. And then you start to feel, crappy about yourself, like, oh, maybe I should have worn a parka, but it's summer. Maybe I should have worn my, like, sweatpants. But, so he goes, and he sits next to me, and he's like, are you going to the beach? And then I'm like, no? Like, I said it like that, like, I wasn't sure where I was going, because I'm, like, I'm polite, and I won't just be like, get the fuck away from me, I'm sitting. So I'm like, no? Like, I'm not sure. And then he's like, I'm going to visit my sister and her daughter. I'm gonna see my niece today. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. And then there's like this old, like, old elderly lady who's kind of sitting near me, and she gives me this look that like, with, like women on public transportation who are trapped underground on this metal box that's carrying you to your destination, uh, gives me this look like, girl, what do you, no, don't, don't feed the troll. <laughs> so, so there's a, <laughs> The reason why women feel threatened when they're alone in like enclosed spaces with men and when they're alone and men approach them is this thing I like to call Schrodinger's murderer. So <laughs> this is, everyone knows what like Schrodinger's cat is, right? It's like there's like, like oh it's, it's a physics thing. I don't understand fucking shit about physics. I took applied math in high school. Um, but there's an alternate reality where there's a cat in a box and in one reality the cat's alive and in the other reality the cat's dead, which always makes me really sad. I love cats. So <laughs> anyway, so when you're a lady and you're on, you know, you're walking by yourself at night or when you're on public transportation by yourself or whatever and there's like a weird person who's a male who starts talking to you, you don't know which reality this is going to be. <laughs> so <laughs> this might be, it'll be the reality where you make a new friend and everything's great, or it's the reality where you're dead in a box, you don't know. <laughs> so, you don't know, you have no way of knowing. So I'm like, am I gonna be dead in a box today? Or am I gonna make a new friend? I, let's see, I guess, I have six more subway stops to go. So, <laughs> so he's talking to me, and then I'm like, I'm being very hyper aware of what he's doing. And, and he seems like okay, like not like, 
he like he's talking and he like we're talking about the beach. I'm like, no, I'm not going to the beach. But he is, and he's talking about his niece and his sister. And then he starts saying like, oh, I went to the, uh, the this is an okay beach, I guess, but the beach in Nova Scotia is good. And I'm like, I start to relax. I'm like, oh, I was just in Nova Scotia. And then I'm like, oh, this is the good reality where we're friends. So <laughs> we're talking, and then you you start like you tend to notice like little things. Like, oh, he's leaning like too close to me, and he's like, look, like he keeps looking at me like weird, like he's smiling, but it's like not reaching his eyes, and his eyes are like, cr like dead, like, like fish eyes, and I'm like, oh, this is the scary reality. <laughs> so, but then I start feeling guilty, because I'm like, is it like years of like me conditioning to be like really hyper aware when I'm by myself? Like, is that making me like reject this person who's being nice to me? So, and then like, I start feeling weird about the fact that the subway is this space that we all share together. It's, you know, it's kind of terrible and awful all the time. And you're contained in this metal box and you're trapped underground. But maybe it's making us exclude human contact. Maybe we're not as close as we always are. Like, are there places where people, everybody's always telling me like, oh, in small towns or in other cities or whatever, people like talk to each other in public and stuff. And in Toronto, everybody's cold. I always hear that in Toronto, everybody's cold. I'm like, well, it's cold in Toronto. So like, what are we gonna do? Um, so then I start to feel weird about it. And then I feel guilty because he seems to be like a really nice guy. And we're on the subway and we're at like approaching kind of Spadina. Uh, and then we're just talking, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then we're close to Spadina, and then I'm getting up because that's where my stop is. And then it didn't seem like he was going to at first, but he's like following me, but like as I'm going, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and then I'm like, maybe I should, this is the reason why I hate the long subways, because before, if a crazy person was like next to you, you could just get up and be like, oh, that's my stop, and then just quickly run into the next car, which is something, I don't do it a lot with crazy people, but I do it a lot with like kids, because the laughter of children upsets me when I am <laughs> commuting. <laughs> It's like, shut up, I have to go to work. You don't have to go to work for 15 years. You don't know what it's like when this brutality is every day. You're taking us to go on a school trip to see the fucking mummies at the ROM. This is my life, man. One day you'll be wondering if you're dead in a box like that cat. <laughs> so I'm on the subway and I'm about to get off because it's Spadina and that's my stop. And it didn't, like, it felt like he, when I got up, he got up. Uh, and then I'm like, you're not going to the beach. There's no beach in Spadina. Unless, I don't know, is, is there? I don't think so. The beach is all the way over there. Over there means Woodbine, by the way. That's where I'm like that wall. Um, so I started to get weirded out a little bit. And I'm, I'm walking, uh, and then it's like, no, Spadina Station. Um, and then I'm getting off, and he's kind of like walking with me. And you know there's like that long tunnel at Spadina that used to have the people mover but doesn't and I never got to experience the people mover and it's sad. I think about it sometimes and I get really sad because I wish I would have ridden on it. I'm one of those people who gets really excited at the airport when you just stand on the thing. Um, I think I just don't like moving my legs. That's why I like the subway because <laughs> it does all the work for you. So we're walking down that like long tunnel and then I don't want to ask about like why he's getting off at not the beach subway. Um, Cause like, I'm like, oh, maybe he's taking like the, the transfer, but no one does that. You get off at St. George, right? Like why would you walk down that long tunnel voluntarily when there's no people mover? Um, <laughs> that's the only reason why you would. Um, so he literally like, I didn't, but like he's reading my mind. He's like, Oh, I just, like, I maybe, like, she just texted me, and, like, should we might just have, like, a drink here. Like, where are you going? And then I don't even answer him. I'm just like, I have a boyfriend, which is, like, <laughs> which, like, I do. He's, like, right here. But <laughs> I'm not lying. It's not, like, that thing that people say. Uh, like, oh, I have to wash my hair. <laughs> so I'm, like, I have a boyfriend. And then he stops looking, like, friendly. And he starts to look a little bit scary, like kind of. And then it's not like a really busy day because this is when I was back in university and it was like, a, you know, university you get off like super early on summer vacation and it's like May, but everybody's still in school. So like a Tuesday at like two is not super busy. So there's not like a lot of people around. There's like a couple of people that like kindly old elderly lady who gave me that girl, what are you doing? Look, wasn't there um, to watch my back. Um, so I just, I'm like, oh, I'm so, because then I start feeling guilty again. I'm like, oh, maybe he wasn't hitting on me, but he was looking at my legs a lot, and he was like leaning forward, and he was breathing weird. I don't know. I just start adding everything up in my head, and he just looks at me, and he's like, 
you're a fucking bitch. And then he just walks away. <laughs> and I'm like shocked, I don't know what to say, because I'm very nice and no one's ever called me that before. I don't exude fucking bitch like attitude, really. I don't know how to do that. So <laughs> as he's walking away, I say the only thing I can do when strange people who don't understand how to communicate with other people in public slash private places, I say the only thing I know how, which is no?